Now, now we're live. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm Chris from Media Fresh Press. This is Nathaniel from One More Cup of Coffee dot com. Nathaniel, hey guys. how's your week been? Oh, pretty good. Hard, hard. I'm, <laughs> I'm tired today. I'm doing the hard work in the yard, pulling weeds. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so I just uh, went through the hangout process, so I've pasted the thing in over there on the other side now, so everybody should be able to watch us and check us out, uh, all two of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was glad that you posted that video um, the other day on how to do a hangout. I mean, I don't really have a need to do one right now, but I didn't know it was so complicated to do the, that process. Well, you know, I guess it's not really complicated. Complicated. I mean, it's it is, but can you imagine like if you had to learn that if you were the first guy that had to figure that out? Yeah. Like, cause I learned it from Ronnie Bencer, you know, and his stuff, and so I can't imagine having to figure that out on my own. I don't know how you do it. I mean, well, I don't know why they don't don't just have a button like in the screen some here, you know, on the right or left that says you know stream live or yeah. whatever. Yeah, make this an event, something like that. Yeah, it seems like it'd be a lot easier to do it that way. I don't know, man. And, and now they've got so, – so I guess before there was only just a couple different kinds of Hangouts, and now there's at least four different kinds, right? Because you got the one that's just, you know, just a group of people or it can be just two people, uh, like the one we did with uh, Mark the other day where it's – yeah. Not broadcasted or none of that stuff, and it's kind of like, and you don't even have the option to broadcast that one. Or you can do this one, like we do, or you can do the one like kind of like this one, and where it, where you're not broadcasting but you have the option to, and not. <laughs> well, what I don't get, what's confusing to me is that now they have that sidebar that comes up that's like when you use Google Chat or Gmail Chat to chat with people. That now they call that a hangout. So oh, yeah. I've had people invite me to hangouts, and I'm like, I don't want to hang out with this person, but they're just sending me a message. Yeah, yeah, that's that was pretty confusing at first, too, cause especially at first I was getting, a, like, one or two of those a day, and I'm like, why all of a sudden everybody wants to start hanging out with me? <laughs> well, it's intimidating because a hangout is uh, – you know, it, it, you yeah. use your video camera. And I'm like, wait, I gotta check check my background, make sure there's nothing weird in the background, make sure I have all my clothes on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly it. Make sure there's nothing weird in the background. Tip number one. <laughs> um, but uh, despite uh, the Hangouts being difficult to manage, I've actually seen a lot of improvement in Google Plus lately that I like. Like I like the sidebar that pops up on the on the left side of the screen where you can, um, you know, see communities and hangouts on air and all that. So I like scrolling down that way. Um, what else? Some of the stuff with like sharing. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I was gonna say, I was gonna make a list, but basically I've been liking Google Plus better. I already liked it, and I think there's been some stuff done lately that I like better about it. So you're talking about the fly out menu that comes on the left side? I get confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where the communities. Home, yeah. profile, people. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, when they first switched over to this new this new layout, man, I was, I was really confused. I, I was like, what the hell is going on here? And then that's when I made the video to to show you how to get back to one stream, but that's really, even to, to go back, they say to go back to the old style, that's really not what the old style was, so when they first switched over, I was not happy, man. I mean, I don't want to just to change well anyway, and especially when it comes to Google. I mean, <laughs> just, as far as I'm concerned, except for the algorithm updates. I like when they do those because I end up coming up to better on those. <laughs> If you go messing with Google Plus, it, it tends to piss me off a little bit. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do they announce these things? Because I always just go into my profile, and then suddenly <laughs> everything's different. I'm like, oh, I guess there was something changed today. 
Yeah, I don't know if they announce them or what. I mean, I know some of them they do because you'll hear people talking about them beforehand, you know, and you sit there and wait. But I don't think they announce, you know, the majority of them. They may announce some of them, but the majority of them, I think they just kind of let you find out on your own. Because I think what they do is roll them out slowly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh. So like, well, like now they have these social and promotion tabs in your Gmail account. Yeah, primary social and promotion. Did you get those? Yeah, and, and again, at first I didn't like it, but now I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I went through the same thing. I was like, oh man, now I gotta flip through my tabs. But now I, I know, like, I don't have to check my promotions right away. I can pretty much look at them and leave them. Um, social comes up with my little notification bells. I don't really have to check that. And yeah. then, so I basically just have to look at the primary one. Yeah, and it and it makes it for me. It makes it. I've noticed my stress level has went down actually because <laughs> you know even though my inbox isn't necessarily empty, that primary box is pretty close to empty. Now. <laughs> Good point. So, so I, I like it. My social stuff, like you said, is always empty because of my notifications. I take care of that with the little bell thing and the promotional stuff. Um, I kind of just let that stack up and. Um, sometimes I'll make posts out of that stuff, you know what I mean? Like I'll go back and dig through it. Yeah. And look at when something was just coming out, like a, like a graph search is a good example. I got one from uh, one of these big social guru people. They were talking about graph search and how it was going to do all this and that. I was like, man, that's interesting. So I started writing a blog post today about <laughs> the yeah. of graph search. Because remember when they rolled graph search out, that was a big deal. And now all was it? Yeah. Because <laughs> I did. I know on Wall Street, everyone was like, "What is this? Nobody yeah. cares." Yeah. It came out because Facebook, their stock hasn't been doing very well, and they were. They said they were going to make some huge announcement, and then they came out with Graph Search, <laughs> and the stock, <laughs> the stock <laughs> tanked that day. Everyone was like, "What is this? Nobody cares." Um, Damn it. <laughs> so that, that's the perspective I got from it. I didn't know they made an announcement like that. Yeah, it was like a big deal. Like they were going to come out with something that was going to revolutionize Facebook. Is the impression I got. Um, <laughs> He's not a very, uh, I don't even know the word for that, man. I just, I knew that they were making announcements like through the social channels, but I didn't know they went to fucking Wall Street stockbrokers. <laughs> that seems like the last place I would have went for something like that. Well, they kind of have to, because as a public company, you have to um, any changes to the stock you have to make publicly known. There was a big thing earlier this year. Uh, I think it was Yahoo or one one company. They made an announcement over Twitter, and it was like the new thing. The FTC had to get involved and decide whether or not that counted as public, um, giving the public knowledge of what what's happening in the company. Otherwise, it's insider trading. Oh, uh, trading. Yeah, so see. if you only tell certain people, you know, you have to make a, a... If you only tell certain people, it's insider trading. So that's the reason you have to make these uh, press releases and announcements so everyone has access to the same information. And um, the person who... I forget what company it was. The person that made the announcement over Twitter, they were making the case that, well, Twitter is a public forum and Twitter... And if you're an investor in the stock, then you're probably going to be following them on Twitter. That's a good point. Yeah, I, I never really looked at it like that. So I guess that's a big downside if you're like a, one of these new social – or any company, really. You can't – man, that seems like a lot of hoops to jump through to try to introduce a new feature that may suck, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, at least a lot of disappointment. <laughs> yeah, man, that's terrible. So – so, uh, have you been watching the stocks uh, in the last couple of days? Yeah, it's been an exciting week for Tesla. Um, yeah. They dropped like fifteen uh, percent in one day. It was a huge drop. Um, and then they, the next day they gained back ten percent, and then they were up again a little bit today. So they pretty much were are back to where they were. The hmm. thing with the thing with stocks is there's analysts and these professional analysts come out and say how much they're supposed to make for the year or how much they expect the stock price to be and they really don't know they're just guessing I mean they're educated guesses and they have reasons for it but they really don't know 
So Tesla was up to 125, um, and someone came out and said it's only worth 58, and so the stock dropped 15% uh, in one day or 17%, something like that. Then someone came out the next day and they said the stock is worth 300, so then the stock went up 10%. <laughs> and tes Tesla in particular is a is a weird stock because uh, it's always in the news. It's this new technology. No one really knows if it's actually going to make money. Everyone likes it, but no one knows if it's going to make money. Um, it's real controversial bec because um, a lot of the old automakers, they sell cars through dealers, and Tesla doesn't want to sell cars through dealers. So Tesla wants to create like an Apple store for cars. So the dealers are suing them, saying that they are not allowed to sell cars in specific states, and so it's it's up and down. Okay, so... I, I watched the uh, the Tesla channel on YouTube a little bit, and I seen something about that about the way they're trying to to sell cars. I don't quite. Do you understand? I don't quite understand it. What do you mean? Well, it's like when you um, when you go and buy a car, you don't go to a Ford store. You go to a car dealership, and they're going to have a variety of cars. They may be a Ford dealership, but they're going to have. Uh, actually, I don't know how that works. A Ford dealership would only have Ford. Cars? Uh-uh. No, they have other stuff, too. Yeah, okay. So they're going to have a, a range of cars, and the idea is that the car maker supplies the dealership with cars, and then uh, the car dealership sells the cars and then uh, deals with warranty stuff and uh, deals with fixing the car and deals with the transaction and all that, plays the middleman. It's supposed to, the theory is it's supposed to protect the customer I'm not really clear on how it's supposed to connect, protect the customer. But then Tesla comes around, and Tesla says, well, we don't want to go through the dealerships because our cars are going to be underrepresented. The dealers don't really know about electric cars. They don't really know about the technology. They're not going to give our cars fair representation. So we want to sell our cars through our own stores. They actually want to build Tesla stores in malls, which means you can go to the mall and pick out a Tesla like you would pick out you know, a, a Mac. <laughs> but... The dealerships are mad because they're saying this is going to open up the door, basically put them out of business. So Tesla comes out with a Tesla store, then there's the Ford store and the GM store. and So I think New York, um, definitely Texas, uh, <laughs> maybe a few other states, they're suing Tesla or they're preventing them, and Tesla's taking them to court, and now it's in the courts on whether or not they can actually build a Tesla store. Oh, that's terrible, man. Uh, man, I didn't, I didn't realize all that. It seems like good competition always gets drugged down, you know? I mean, the old way of doing stuff, you got... And it doesn't matter what it is, you know? Uh, same thing with Google algorithm updates. You know, you got the people that can't stand it, and then the people that are all for it, and... It just seems like creativity oftentimes gets punished in our country or in in the world, it, it, you know. But it seems like even yeah, well, I mean the the yeah the dealers are basically just stuck in their ways. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I sold used cars for a little while, man, and it was one of the really. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> I've done a lot of stuff, man. I've uh, let's see, <laughs> I've delivered pizza. I was in the army. I uh, did basic at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Uh, I was a miner for a little while. I was a truck driver. I've sold used cars. <laughs> wow, that's like <laughs> that's a a pretty uh, cool list of jobs there. You might as well add like firemen and policemen. You're like, all right, miner, <laughs> uh, <laughs> army. Truck driver, my uh, yeah, you know, like real uh, famous jobs, you know, yeah, pizza I delivery wanted, guy. I wanted to experience uh, a lot of the world, and I, I can definitely say that I did, man. <laughs> I've been all over the country. I haven't, I haven't been outside of the country. Um, I want to go bad, man. You've been, where, where have you been outside of the country? I know you've been. Uh, a lot of places. It's funny. I'm the opposite. I haven't gone anywhere. I've only only ever been in the state of California. I went to Oregon once for a school field trip, um, but I've never been anywhere else. Um, but I've been in quite a few places outside. So 
Europe, a bunch of places. Um, I mean, I lived in the Czech Republic for four years, and then I basically traveled all of Western and Central Europe, um, not so much Eastern Europe. And then I lived in China for five years, and then a lot. So I went to a lot of Southeast Asia. Not I never went to Korea and Japan. I never went to India and the Middle East on that side. Um, so there's still a lot of places I haven't been. I haven't been to South uh, South America. Haven't been to Africa. Haven't been to Australia down there. Huh. That's pretty cool. Um. So, what is what is Europe like? Do they have? I mean, are they pretty mainstream like or what? I know, like, uh, I mean, and I'm talking about as far as like web stuff goes, like. Do they have is the internet like real popular like it is here? Because I know like China has like their big like they have a their own like Facebook thing that's huge there, right? But I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't know how Europe is. Yeah, I can't really say much about Europe. I mean, when I was there, uh, it was it was not that common to have your own laptop. You know, now that was so when I was there, that was 2003. So People had laptops, but, but it wasn't necessary. Uh, there's no such thing as a smartphone. Or maybe there was the iPhone. No, I think there was only an iPod. I don't think there was an iPhone yet. Um, and I had one crappy laptop. I had one kind of digital texting phone. And other than that, I was totally disconnected from the Internet. Like, I didn't have anything. I used to be very, like, I don't even have a personal Facebook um uh, personal Facebook page. The only reason I use my Facebook thing now is for the business stuff. So I wasn't on Facebook. I wasn't on uh, MySpace. I was never on any sort of network. Uh, I was slow to adopt adopt Gmail. Uh, I remember when Gmail came out, I was still on Hotmail, and I was like, what is this crap? I'm never going to use Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was the same way, man, and like with Facebook and all that stuff, I was forced to get on there. My little brother, uh, my little brother and dad, you know, they always been in the internet stuff, and I never really was. And they had this new little program they were gonna try out, and we all had to have Facebook pages. And I was like, man, are you kidding me? And I, that's when I finally got one. And I've only been on Twitter for like a few months, but dude, what? I mean, I hated Twitter. I was like, I just don't get it. Google Plus was the first social media site that I was ever really into, and then from there I could kind of see what it was. And obviously, I started hating Facebook at that point. I was like, wow. Oh, I mean, I don't even understand the point at all. And then, you know, I was on Twitter a little bit, and then I started seeing how relevant Twitter was with news. And so I'm kind of a big fan for Twitter now, for sure. Uh, Twitter and Google Plus, but I was, I was, I'm not one of those guys that's like, yeah, I've been on there for 10 years, you know, I remember when it was this and when it was that, because I don't, <laughs> I, I just, I think it's cool to watch news and stuff like that, and uh, Google, that's the thing about Google Plus, I love Google Plus, but it's kind of slow on the news side of things, I don't know if you've ever noticed that, it seems like. No, I don't watch a lot of the news, and I don't keep up with the news that much, so. Yeah, it's uh, I, th I guess it's gonna be hard to beat Twitter as far as news goes because it's just so instant. But yeah, but uh, probably like for trustworthiness, and I don't know how this turned into a news show, but for trustworthiness, uh, Google Plus will probably give you better sources than Twitter will because you know Twitter, they got you know, there's a green-eyed monster, with laser beams downtown, you know, they, they just say whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the fake dead celebrity news? I've heard a couple of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that freaked me out. Me not knowing, I was like, I posted one of those on Facebook too. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta check your sources. <laughs> Britney Spears is dead. Yes. No. <laughs> have you have Have you ever used um? Any of the like the lesser known networks like Path? Have you heard of Path? I've heard of Path, and actually, I just recently put it on my phone because I want to check them out. You know, I want to know about them. But 
I don't get into it. My Instagram is another one of my favorites, but uh, Pass is one I know about, but I don't use it like ever. Um, I I I have heard good stuff about it. Uh, I haven't used it myself, but the thing I heard about it is that it was basically like Facebook, but more exclusive. So I've heard you're limited to the number of friends that you can have. And once you reach that limit, in order to add more people in, you have to kick people out. Hmm. And so the idea is that it's not uh, so cluttered as Facebook. You know, now it's like someone sends you a, a friend request. How do you deny someone a friend request on Facebook? It's like everyone has Facebook and everyone's connected. So a path is supposed to be a bit more exclusive. Hmm. I, yeah, I didn't know that, but I, I've heard that people have problems switching the path because of they try to, I guess people, I guess probably a younger generation, the best way to describe it, is going to path but they can't get some of their friends on Facebook to switch over because they don't know how to, so people are saying that's what's going to be the downfall of path and, and oh, I, right. yeah, I just don't see uh, I don't see how it's going to be relevant man um, Pinterest is probably going to stay relevant for a little while longer. There's one uh, called Plinky. Have you ever heard of it? Plinky? Yeah, it's pretty retarded, man. But it, <laughs> <laughs> I joined it a long time ago. I thought it was going to be cool. It's kind of like, if you know what Quora is, it's kind of like a mini Quora. It's like, I've heard of Quora, but I don't understand. Quora is just like question and answer thing, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it's really cool because... Um, and I, I didn't really consider it a social network, but I guess it is. People, that's what everybody calls it. And what it is is like a social network for like information. I get. I mean, I don't really know how to describe it, but basically, it is. It's just like a Q and A place. You can go there and you can ask anything, man. And if you if you type it in there and and it's not already there, you're gonna find an answer for it, and you can like pay people with. I think it's like gold coins or something like, you know, you can pay them, huh. you can make credits to pay people for answers and stuff. It's kind of cool. I found out a lot of stuff from there before, man. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I see it in the search results, but it's just one of those things I'm late to adopt. I, I see Quora, and I've looked at a couple things, and I wasn't too impressed with the layout and the answers, and so I pretty much avoid it in the search results. But maybe I should start checking it out more because yeah. I, I hear the name a lot. Yeah, if you got a question like and you can't find it like by searching Google and YouTube and stuff like that, then chances are you'll be able to find an answer there. Huh. Pretty good for that kind of stuff. So uh so Tesla's doing good or well Tesla you said's evened out this week, right? Yeah, pretty much. What about Zynga? Have you checked them out? Because I hear all this stuff about them. And Zynga is hard to tell. Zynga is really uh speculative and I don't think they've actually made any money yet. I think they're still losing money. Um, and if I remember correctly, I think they kicked out their old CEO and they got a new CEO. Um, so it's really up and down. I mean, it was way, way up, and then uh, and then basically <laughs> lost most of its value. And I think it went. I, I think this week, this week or last week, they changed CEOs and it, there was a big spike. Um, but I haven't really been following. The, the stock just because I really don't know. Zynga's just games, isn't it? Yeah, Zynga is like, yeah, it's the, the I believe it's, well, it's not the premier game thing for Facebook, but it's like the biggest one, the most popular one. And the reason I brought it, because we were talking about social media, and that's what Zynga has made, or what I thought it made its money off of, so it's at least made its name off of providing Facebook games, right? So, yeah. Thought that uh, you know, I find it odd that they've never made any money. But I mean, I I wouldn't know. But um, what kills me about it is the CEO that you're talking about, Mark Pincus. Dude, he he's like a freaking genius. But his problem is, I think that they even had their games on Google Plus for a little while. I don't know if you ever noticed it or not. I don't never play games, but when I learned who Mark Pincus was and stuff like that, I started figuring out, searching the stuff he did, and and it seems like it seems like once they kick 
the games off of Google Plus is when they kind of started to go on the decline. And I don't think there was that many people playing games on Google Plus, but I just kind of find it odd the timing of the whole thing. And uh, I don't know. Mark Pinkus has been in the news forever. They say that he took stock options from the staff and all kinds of stuff like that. But it's just sad because I think the guy's a genius, man. I mean, he took these stupid little games and pretty much, I mean, pretty much got every housewife in America playing. Was <laughs> is that the one that did they make Angry Birds? Oh, I don't know if they made Angry Birds or not. Um, I'm sure they had a version of it or something on Facebook, but I have to look at that. I don't know if they made Angry, but Farmville but it's probably oh, Farmville. yeah. So. I'm trying to see right now if they made because uh, here's why I went from Tesla to Zynga because I watched Mark Pincus and when uh, when all the stuff started coming back again about how they're having trouble and all this stuff you know where I went I went straight to the the Bing Finance page to see <laughs> the stock was. I'm like shit I'm gonna buy a bunch of this. <laughs> <laughs> But it was at three, and I looked at the forecast. It's like at three dollars, and it's never been like hardly any higher than that. And I, I, just... I may, I may have been thinking at the of the wrong stock. I may be thinking of Groupon. Um, the the thing that I know, or not, not that I know, I know that Zynga does games, and I know there was speculation that Zynga was going to move into gambling, online gambling games. Mm-hmm. And uh, they people were saying because with something like Farmville, you can't really make that much money off of. Isn't Farmville free? Yeah, I think where they were getting money from them is people would actually. I mean, people would pay physical money for you know whatever they needed for their uh, crops or whatever you know. So people yeah, okay. would pay physical money for that kind of stuff, which is. I mean, you got to be a hell of a salesman to get somebody to give you real money for fake fertilizer, dude. A a digital fertilizer. (laughs) Yeah. I'm looking at the stock here. I can see in in, uh, February 2012, it was up to 14. And now it's at 342. And earlier this month, it was down to 258. So... You know, if you bought it, even if you bought it at say ten, you know, you would have lost more than half of your money. You'd have, you'd be left with a third of your investment. Um, but with a stock like this, I mean, it's speculative, so there's a good chance to have a lot of volatility. So let's say tomorrow Zynga comes up with like a super awesome plan to make money. Doesn't matter if they actually make money. If everyone thinks they're going to make money, then you can you can uh, make a lot of money like that and ride the ride the speculation. Right, and then even if they don't make money, like you said, it drives the stock up. You can sell then, right? Yeah. I mean, it, as long as the stock's hot. So that, I don't know. I was looking into that. I, I'm you know I don't know shit about this stuff. I, as a matter of fact, I think everything I know about stocks I learned from listening to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> then you probably shouldn't <laughs> just invest based on my advice. <laughs> well, it just gave me the uh, the places to go and look at this stuff, and I mean, I, I'm I'm like mesmerized by it, you know. Especially when I hear, I, I know enough about stuff to know that you know, chatter can bring a stock down and and up. So when I start hearing chatter, especially if it's bad, I'm going to go check the stock now just to see where it's at, and then I'll look where it has been. I didn't realize it had been as high as $14 over. I'd probably already got a couple shares. I mean, a couple shares ain't going to do nothing, but sure would be nice to see that some bitch, you know, just just hit one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Be, the, um, of course, that's never going to happen, but... The, the thing to remember with, with stocks like that is by the time you and I get news of anything, the stock's already moved because there's people with their button with their fingers sitting over a button waiting to buy 
and as soon as anything happens in the news, it's either buy or sell instantly. Oh. There was a uh, one, maybe twice within the last couple months, where there was fake news that came out over Twitter, and because every I think there was fake news about a bomb in the White House or something like that. Um, <laughs> and now the NSA is going to be listening to our hangout. <laughs> oh, God. Thanks, Nixon. <laughs> but there was fake news on Twitter, and you could see that the entire stock market crashed for like 15 minutes and then went right back up to where it was based on fake news. So there's a lot of traders who are sitting around looking for news like that, and then there's also uh, robots that they have that are like automatic traders that look for specific words in the media and then they make automatic trades based on this news. So by the time you and I are like checking our checking our Facebook account or checking our Google Plus account, we say, oh, Zynga's got bad news. It, the stock's already moved. It's already done. Okay. I, I wondered about that. I wonder how quick it was, but I, I didn't realize it was that slow. But it makes a lot of sense, man. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you get lucky. Like... It, the thing is, if you really believe... Uh, the other thing to remember is you invest in what you know. If you know social media and you use uh, games and you think, okay, this is great, I spend my money on it, uh, I know lots of people that are spending money on it, even if there's negative news, a lot of times the media gets caught up. The media reports on the media. So you get one person who comes out with a news source and everyone reports based on that news source and it's just like this uh, self-perpetuating circle where everyone's reporting the same thing uh, because no one wants to be left behind. No one wants to be the news source that didn't put it out. So you get this negative news in the media and if you as an investor know that this stock is profitable or believe that it's a good company and then you invest during, just like you said, you invest during the downtimes, then there's a good chance over time um, that the stock will prove itself. <clears throat> That's, uh, and you know, you're talking about if you're in social media and stuff like that, and I, I just, I don't think that social gaming is going to last long, honestly, man, especially not through the channels that Zynga does it with, because Facebook is, you know, everybody says that they're terrible at mobile, and Zynga is riding on their back, so I think for Zynga to ever make any real money, they're gonna have to to go outside of that game, that social gaming thing, and that's why, me personally, I would I would try to invest with them because I, I believe in Mark Pincus and I'm thinking he'll pull it off, but it probably won't be with social gaming. <laughs> so, but and it's just hard to tell. I mean, if they if they do social gaming now, they do Farmville, but let's say they get involved in poker, and then you can play international poker on your iPhone with people from around the world. I mean, that would be pretty cool. You just open your poker app. You know, you got 30 minutes to wait before a plane, and you're like, all right, I want to go play some online poker. You open up your Zynga app, and you pay whatever whatever you pay to for the subscription or whatnot. Tons of people would do that. People love poker. Oh, yeah. Or, if Zynga hooked up with like one of the bigger gaming companies like Activision or Blizzard and they made like a badass first person shooter for for mobile and then you know all the kids were like all right after school go home grab my iPhone sit in my room and you know you're just on your phone all day playing playing your shooter game on your phone through Zynga maybe Zynga didn't make the actual game but maybe they developed the technology to do that yeah so, and that's why I think Mark Pink is, yeah, so I wouldn't necessarily be investing in, in you know, if I was, which I'm not going to, but if I was, it's just, it's just like you said, I think that uh, you can, I think that he's capable of pivoting away from Facebook and away from social gaming. It'll probably still be some kind of gaming company, but... I don't think that uh, I don't think he's gonna let Zynga fail. He's been involved with Zynga for so long, man, like a long time. I don't even know how. Like, I believe back in the late '90s, or maybe even the mid '90s when they started. So he's not gonna let it fail. He's been through all these up and ups and downs, and landed. Just got lucky with Facebook. Facebook and Zynga. That's just a chapter 
in his life, you know what I mean? <laughs> so okay. I think, Well, yeah, if he's still with the company, I might have uh, been wrong about kicking out their CEO. Maybe it was Groupon that fired their CEO. I can't remember. Well, I think they removed it, like, because you can step down, right? You can still, I mean, like, uh, what's that guy's name? Kevin Systrom of Instagram, you know what I mean? He's he's the guy that built Instagram, and he, he was the owner until they sold to Facebook. Oh. And now he's still there, and he runs daily operations, but he's just not the CEO. He's like, okay. they give him weird titles and stuff like that, I guess, but... I don't, I really, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure. But, yeah, I think there's definitely some potential. Um, I'm kind of like you that I invest uh, partly. It, you invest in the CEO. You invest in the person who's leading the company. Like, people slam Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. But I think Mark, Mark Zuckerberg is the person who knows Facebook best, and I think he's the person who's best to lead it. He may not, you know, cater to the Wall Street people, but... I think he's going to do what's best for Facebook, and then in turn, that's going to be best for the company and best for the shareholders. Yeah, I agree. I looked up Groupon here too, and it it looks like you're right about them. I guess uh, Andrew Mason or something like that was fired. So I wonder if that's the one you were talking about. That's another company I don't know much about, man, but they're always getting trashed. Have you ever used them at all for anything? No. No, the thing I don't like about Groupon is that it gets you to spend more money. Like, <laughs> you get notified of these deals, and you're like, "Man, I can't pass it. I can't pass up this deal. I gotta go <laughs> buy something." But I wasn't intending on buying it. For me, I'm like, if I want to buy something, I'll buy it and I'll pay the price that it's sold for. If someone gives me 10% off, it's not gonna make me want to buy something more. I mean, if I can get 10% off something I want, that's great. But I'm not gonna go out and, and uh, get yeah. you know 12 cans of chili because because <laughs> you get one free or whatever the yeah. whatever the deal is. Yeah, I know. I, I I agree with that. So I used Groupon one time. I bought a pull-up bar, and it was it was first of all it was like you said like a. It was like you know they try to get you know they got all these other great deals that you don't want to pass up, but. Uh, it was later on, like I seen the same, actually probably a better one at Walmart, and it was cheaper. It was Amazon's where it was, and I was like, man, I should have just waited a few days. And I got this three-piece pull-up bar that's probably gonna fall apart. <laughs> the thing I like about Groupon, um, I, I think I read it in an article somewhere, or maybe it's just a good idea I had. But <laughs> I think if you had like location, like some sort of location technology that was on your phone, and when you drive by some place or you walk by a place, it'll like send you a text message. This place has a deal on something. Oh yeah, that would be pretty cool. So like you're going into a mall, and you walk by a store. You walk in as you walk into a store. They they send you a text message. And they say, okay, well. We have deals on this and this product, and then you can look at it and maybe even price compare. I think a lot of companies could be could do good to allow you to price compare. I, I think some people try to some companies try to prevent you from doing that, but if they would just say, okay, whatever Amazon price is, we'll beat it by ten percent. Like I'd go into the store and buy it. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, that almost seems like a a good mashup between Groupon and um, Foursquare because you know how Foursquare. I've never used them either, but I know they're like a location-based type deal. So if you could get Groupon to mash up with Foursquare, and then you know, say hey, you know, when you check in, then Groupon could kick in and do what you're talking about. Say hey, there's 15 deals within you know half a mile of you. That'd be yeah. a good idea. Now probably save Foursquare and Groupon both. They require <laughs> you now. <laughs> Let's hope they're watching. <laughs> yeah. well, um, that kind of relates to what I wanted to ask you today. Um, I was going to ask, how do you manage all of your social media accounts? Like, just talking about all this social media stuff, there's just so much going on. And it's like, I feel like I have cut out a lot, a lot, just by doing Google Plus and Twitter, and sometimes I still feel overwhelmed. Like, there's... 
not only are there all these different channels that people are on, you know, Facebook, Groupon, Foursquare, uh, Google Plus, Twitter, all this stuff, but then you have all these people that you have to manage in there. And so I get like 50, between 50 to 100 different shares, people sharing stuff with me per day on Google Plus, and I don't even pay attention to Twitter on a regular basis. Like I'll do like 20 minutes a day or I'll have like an hour session at night where I kind of go through some tweets. But it's just so hard to keep track of everything. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't do a real good job of it. I made the mistake of trying to have a personal one and a, like a for my site, which uh, I mean, I think it's great if you can handle it. But I, I just I can't handle both of them properly. So for me, I, I'm I'm staying more focused on because and it's because of what we we just said. You know, when you invest in somebody, you're not really investing in that company. You're investing in them. So I'm trying to maintain a better uh, social element with my personal profiles and Twitter. I, I mostly handle through my phone. I, I tried using Hootsuite and stuff like that for it, um, <clears throat> which I do when I'm scheduling posts. I use, you know, I use Sway and and uh, and Hootsuite together. What I actually do, and I hope the Sway guys aren't watching, but what I actually do <laughs> with Sway is I, you know, when you go in there and you click share and it brings up the box with all the yeah. information in it, I copy and paste that stuff. And then put it in Hootsuite, and I schedule my week like that sometimes. Oh. Sometimes I only schedule a day like that. But um, and then as far as Google Plus, I just I manage that manually from my desktop. And then Twitter, uh, any replies or retweets or follows, I manage from my phone. And uh, that's basically it, you know, with that and Hootsuite. Hootsuite is my biggest one, though, for managing them. And, and like I said, Sway is where I find the content. Because I, I really, I use Sway more as a reader, you know what I mean? Like, I guess yeah. I use Google Reader. I use Sway because it gives you all that really good content. And so once I find stuff in there I like, I'll read it. And uh, if I like it, I'll schedule it for posting or I'll, I'll either share it right then or I'll schedule it for later on, and I don't know, man. I don't think there's a good way to manage it all, especially if you're really, you know, if you're everywhere, which I don't think there's a lot of people that say you got to be, you got to use SlideShare, Google+, Plus, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, you know, all this crazy crap. I, I, I don't think that you can do that, man. I think that, um, I think that if you're a business, then you need to know where your customers are. Unfortunately, like for let's say somebody like me, if I was in a uh, let's just say, let's just say a make money at home thing, right? There's not too many people on Google Plus that are really interested in 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 learning how to make money from home. You know that aren't already kind of advanced in it. So really. Uh, an audience like that is probably going to be more on Facebook or, or Pinterest or, you know, I don't know for sure. But so to me, you got to make, make a decision. Are you going to handle your social media the way, like, uh, the way you want to do it, where you want to be, or are you going to plan to be where your audience is at? And that's a pretty tough decision because it's, it's easier if you like being on Google Plus to be on Google Plus because it's funner. You'll manage it better, but if your audience isn't there, you're just wasting your time. It may be a lot of fun, and you may get a good kick out of it. Um, but there's a line there that you got to draw. So um, I'm work. I'm trying to work on a post about that. I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I think that's what you were saying. It's something I've been thinking about for a long time. It's like, you know, how do you manage it? I think you take two or three and, and just run with those. And that that's yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I can do. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of one of those things. There's so much going on. You just can't. You can't do it all. You can't do all the networks. You can't get all the news. You can't share all of your stuff. It's like you just gotta gr grab a small a small piece and do the best you can with it. 
you make a good point about having to choose between what you like and where your where your customers are. Hopefully they they meet. Yeah. Um, I find I have the same problem when I write. Like I want to write about stuff that interests me, but I have to think about my audience. I mean, my because my audience is it's going to be beginners. I find sometimes that writing about the beginner stuff over and over again is a little bit boring. I want to write about a little bit more advanced stuff because that's the stuff I, I like reading about and that's the stuff I want to sort of flex my brain on. But it, it's a hard decision to to know uh, when to do what you like because it's going to help you like your business more and be more enthusiastic about it and when to do uh, what your audience expects of you. Yeah, I think that's a pretty hard line to find, man. Um, but in the same breath, you know, you got to do the stuff you like and the stuff you enjoy because that's where, I mean, that's where your creativity comes from, right? I mean, if you're constantly being forced to only write about this kind of stuff, it, you know, you never, like you said, you're never gonna stretch. You're never gonna stretch out and, and get. Get that, get your brain firing. You know what I mean. You're just constantly writing and sharing and reading stuff that you already know. It's not gonna. I mean, that's good to a point to go over and rehash stuff. But yes, yeah, it's, it's so. I don't know, man. I love Google Plus a lot, but I don't think for me my audience is there. I mean, some of it is. Some of the stuff I write about, people do enjoy there. But you know, like as far as strictly a sales thing. I'm not going to find too many people on Google Plus to care to join uh, wealthy affiliates or something like that because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there is quite a few of them there, but chances of finding them there are probably a little less likely than they would be somewhere like Facebook or, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, people say that that uh, everyone's leaving Facebook, but from what I see, <laughs> it's the, still the most popular. Facebook and Twitter, like. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right about that. People are Facebook's pretty like ingrained into our society, man. So it's gonna take a lot to get a massive amount of people to switch from Facebook to Google Plus or to any other thing. They may use both. But they're not going to leave Facebook. Yeah. Do you get... Um, well, okay, two questions. Do you actually get engagement um, on Facebook? Are you able to connect with people on Facebook that you don't know, like get more people interested in your business? And then um, do you get any engagement on Google Plus just because I feel like people don't really talk on Google Plus. There's like plus wanting and people sharing their own content, but there's not a lot of conversation going on. Uh, yeah, for me, it's kind of the other way around. Like, um, I guess it's kind of a toss-up, really, but only because I, I got some engagement from Facebook, but I kind of went about it in a different direction. Somebody hired me to show them the basics of how to set up a fan page, and so from there... I kind of branched out into her group of people, and now when I make a post on Facebook or something like that, they'll share it and stuff like that, but only because they're constantly asking me questions and they're trying to return my favor. <laughs> so there's really that's not real engagement. Um, like on Google+, Plus, I, I don't know, man. I see a lot of people that get a huge amount of engagement, but I find the, the conversation on Google+, Plus a lot more in, uh Intellectual, I guess. So, but no, my posts don't usually get much legs. I mean, they don't they don't take off much. Um, sometimes, sometimes they do, but I, I think the majority of my engagement comes from Twitter, man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like people talking to you, people tweeting at you and asking you questions. Yeah. Um, not so or much. Just people asking. sharing. Yeah, not so much asking me questions, but uh, sharing, and uh, I get a lot of retweets, it seems like. Huh. Yeah, but that's because I use Sway, you know what I mean? So, And Sway helps a bunch with that. Um, and what's weird is it seems like every time I write a tweet or share a tweet about Facebook, 
It's like gold, man. I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> and it, not even in a negative light. Like people on Twitter seem to want to know how to use Facebook. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's, it's uh, like mommy bloggers or I, I really don't know. But yeah, it seems like my my best tweets come from stuff about Facebook, about Facebook fan pages and. And stuff like that. I remember that. I'm gonna start using a Facebook hashtag on every tweet I make. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, to be honest with you, once I found that, I was like, man, I, I you know, I usually do, um, which I've kind of slid down on my tweeting lately. But yeah, I usually throw at least one Facebook thing in there a day, and I damn sure use the hashtag Facebook in it because <laughs> <laughs> it just takes off, man. That's why you'll probably start noticing me writing a little bit more about Facebook. Okay, good to know. Um, <laughs> you use Hootsuite, Hootsuite a lot, right? Not a lot, but yeah, I mean, I use it. Can you schedule Google Plus posts on Hootsuite? Yeah, yeah, for your fan page is not, or I mean, I'm sorry, but business page. For, yeah, for your business page. Huh? Yeah, you can't do it for your personal page yet. That's weird. Yeah. You know why they do that? Uh, something about Google's API, Google won't give it up, or I'm not really 100% sure what the deal is with it, so, mm. yeah, I think, uh, have you ever heard of do share? Do share? Yeah. Or do share? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, do <clears throat> share. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah, it's, uh. It's a Chrome extension. Do you not read my blog? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a Chrome extension, and uh, you can use it to post. Yeah, you can use it to post to your personal page. The problem with it is you can schedule and everything, but the problem with it is uh, it's got to be done with Chrome. Chrome has to be open, and so does your Google Plus profile. So if you schedule a post for midnight tonight, then you have to leave your, you know, you have to leave Chrome up and running with your Google Plus profile open, or not your profile, but your, you know, what I'm saying. Google Plus has to be up and running. Okay. Because I, I use um something called Buffer. Have you ever used Buffer? No, I've heard of it. Is it any good? For tweets, it's pretty good. Um. I'm using just a free version, and actually, now that I think of it, I might be able to uh, schedule Google Plus uh, posts in Buffer. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into it. Um, but the, usually, I'm really against scheduling stuff because I feel like um, social media should be you engaging with your audience. And I follow people that schedule stuff, and it's so obvious they schedule stuff because they, they tweet every hour on the hour or they share something, and it's a bit robotic. But I was going through like some stuff that I forgot to tweet um, on Wealthy Affiliate every week. I, I do a blog post on, on like a tip of what I've learned about affiliate marketing. And I did 20 tips, and I didn't tweet any of them. So I thought I wanted to go back and share them, so I just buffered them for the next three days and so I've got a tweet going out every two hours for this stuff that um, it's just kind of like I want to share it and I don't want to forget about it so so I scheduled it and I found that uh, it was the first time I thought well okay this could be kind of useful and maybe appropriate in some situations and I thought I could do something similar for Google Plus but it wasn't on my it wasn't on the buffer option at had a Facebook. You can schedule Facebook posts with it, um, but I was just looking for something to schedule the uh, the Google Plus shares. Yeah, so like I said, Hootsuite's pretty good for for your business page, but I I know what you mean about like scheduling. Cause it does seem like it's a bit like that. I mean, that defeats the point of social media, right? Because you're taking the whole social out of it. So, and that's why, like, I don't do it, like, I don't go, I won't plan, like, a whole week ahead of time sometimes, you know what I mean, like, I try, I will plan ahead, and sometimes I'll plan pretty far ahead, but, um, I still try to keep a human element to it, you know what I mean, like, I'll, yeah, I'll still tweet 
you know, my normal stuff, you know what I mean? Um, I still post my regular stuff, but um, the thing about Twitter, man, is is it, you seem to get, or I seem to get more response out of scheduled stuff. I don't know why. Um, and it could just be the time of day, but um, yeah, I just, I so I try to mix it up. I'll, I'll schedule, you know, for a few days. And then in between those times, I'll, if I see something I've read that I like, I'll, I'll tweet it right there. I, I think it helps keep a balance. I don't. Know. That's pretty much what I decided to do. Is what what you just said there. The tweets were two hours apart, um, and so that I felt like that got the uh, the tweets done that I felt like I had to do. They were part of the business thing, but they weren't close enough that I felt like I could still. Um, do my own personal stuff in between if I if I really felt I needed to. The issue, the problem with doing um, everything by hand is I find that I don't really want to do it during the day, and then at the end of the night, you know, it's like 11 o'clock at night, and I'm bored. I'm like, all right, I'll do my social media work, and then it's like an hour, and I share five things on Google Plus, and I do five different tweets, and it's like. And no one's one. No one's watching. Two. No one wants to get you know rapid fire shares like that. So it kind of defeats the purpose doing it like that. Yeah, I I know exactly what you mean, and that brings up. I seen uh, it must have been like after our first hangout or something like that. Um, I seen it was pretty late at night. I was like, I seen three or four of your posts. I was like, why the hell is he sharing stuff at 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it defeats... <laughs> like, there's no reason to do it. So sharing stuff with no one watching is really w whatever, but... I, 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 know, thought you, I thought you knew something I didn't know, man. I've been asking <laughs> to ask you about that, because I'm like, damn, you must know something. <laughs> no, no. Amateur mistake. Well, I mean, the time... Because, I mean... You know, we got an audience from all over the world, so the time, I mean, should probably have stuff going 24 hours a day, but uh, I, again, I guess it goes back to your, the type of audience you have and knowing them pretty well. But, so that's, I thought maybe you were just after a different market or something. <laughs> Night bloggers. Yeah. Well, obviously, someone was watching. You were. <laughs> you were. <laughs> I was there, and I did go read it. <laughs> I damn sure did. Oh, man, we're coming up on an hour here, man. Anything else you want to get off your chest before we close this thing down? Uh, just about Sway. I wanted to ask you about Sway. Um, is there any way to... Well, here's my problem. I'm not sure how to ask um, the question. Um, I found... So I, I put, like, uh, what my target audience is into... And one of them was, like, technology, which is kind of just, like, a tangent interest just because of mobile and Internet and stuff like that. And it's kind of like, you know, my niche with one more cup of coffee is make money online, home-based business, stuff like that. But I found that this particular topic just invaded my whole sway uh, dashboard there. Everything was about Microsoft and Apple and things like that. So is there a way to, to turn that down, or do I need to just uncheck that? Huh. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know if there's a way to turn it down. I wonder why it did that. Maybe because uh, it way I know that they tried to – did you tweet it out or post it out from this way? Uh, a couple things I did. Um, so what they'll try to do is – um, I think they'll try to give you if something's working for your audience they'll try to give you more of it so that maybe what happens so maybe just um, before you turn it off try to share more stuff from another topic you know what I mean and maybe balance it out does it list what topic it's about or well, um, you'll see the tags at the top it'll say relevant to your audience or uh, let's see Right now, that's all mine. Say, okay, so I got relevant for your audience, and then engaging content type. There, there are little green tags on the top left corner of each post. 
Okay, yeah. There's three different ones. Right now I'm only seeing uh, relevant for your audience and then engaging content or something like that. Yeah, engaging content type. So it has a they have an algorithm to it where they try to adjust to what's working for you and, and what what you're sharing most and what's getting so like if you've only shared one thing and it got retweeted twice, then they're gonna try to give you more content. So it's like a ratio thing, you know what I mean? Okay. Because like I'm looking I, I checked five different now I can't remember what topics um I checked. I don't know if there's a way we can see that, but I'm seeing like Xbox, uh, Galaxy Notes, PlayStation 3. It's like all hardware stuff, um, which isn't really relevant. So what? Yeah, you can go in the top left. You see where it says Sway right there? Yeah. You go under and it says Settings. Okay. Yeah, you can go in there and you can uncheck that stuff, or you can click Advanced. And you can add more there. Oh, okay. Because, see, I've got social media, business, marketing, gadgets, and finance. And I feel like it's given me a lot of gadgets. Yeah. I never uh, put the gadgets. Cause that, that, and that's why I'm not really too much into that kind of stuff. I never – I got social media, business, marketing, startups, and mobile. And it seems like I get a lot of, like, uh, business stuff. Which is fine with me, but so yeah, maybe maybe change it a little bit, and I think once you share more, it gets a little bit smarter to what you're wanting and to what your audience wants. Okay. See the graphs at the top, right, where it says like your best sources and all that stuff. What was that? Your you where's your best sources? It's uh right next to. Where the settings thing was, if you look to the right a little bit on your screen. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, it's got the little So what does that mean? YouTube is my best source. Is that where I get the most shares? I think that what that means is, uh, you know, your best where, you know, uh, how do I say that? The source, basically, where it came from. Okay. So, like, mine is business to community com which is because I share, I share a lot of their stuff. So then it's YouTube and then MediaFreshPress.com because it will actually pick up on what you're sharing on Twitter. I don't know how it does that. I don't know if they meant to do that or what. But. So is this who is sharing your content or most relevant to your audience? Because I see two websites that one of what they're just like people that um, I met through this uh, – Google Plus community mm -hmm. that I don't know. I mean, they're just random bloggers. They're not like big, big websites. So, so you're, sure seeing, I mean. you're seeing their websites under the best sources? Yeah, my number two is reginaldchan.net. So this is a guy that I just talked to a couple times. I met him on some other blog. And then the other one is the Tech Shell. And that's number four. And that's just a guy's blog that I commented on because he was part of the uh, that WSS community. I think, uh, yeah. So I think that it goes. I think it goes more off of what you're sharing. Okay. What's actually being reshared? I think um, there was a time when I felt differently about that. So honestly, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But like I said, try to just share more. Like give it a few days. Keep using it for a few days and. Uh, Use it like, you know, at least twice a day, maybe two or three times a day, and it'll get smarter, and you'll see it like actually start picking oh, okay. up. Okay. So it does learn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because like I'm seeing my trending keywords is Mailchimp, and that was like one Google Plus post I shared like a week ago. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's exactly because it just doesn't have that much content from you built up yet to know. Oh, okay. Yeah, it gets a lot better, man. All right, well, I'll keep using it, and I'll uh, check back in next week and see how it goes. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, use it. Try to use it at least twice a day, you know. Um, and I bet, I bet next week it'll have all kinds of good content in there for you. Okay, cool. That's, that's something to work on. Yep.
All right, man. I hope that helps everybody. Uh, Chris from Media Fresh Press, Nathaniel from One More Cup of Coffee dot com, and we will see you guys next week. So yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, man. Bye. All right.